The crisis of deep human suffering is in plain sight. And there's no time to waste. We have to act and we have to act now. It's not hard to see that we're in the middle of the once in several generations economic crisis with a once in several generations public health crisis. Tonight, I'd like to talk to you about our way forward. The $600 already appropriated is simply not enough. That means that 18 million Americans currently rely on unemployment benefits while they look for work can count on these checks continuing to be there. Plus, there will be a $400 per week supplement so people can make ends meet. This gets money quickly into the pockets of millions of Americans who will spend it immediately on food and rent and other basic needs. As the economists tell us, that helps the whole economy grow. One in seven households in America, more than one in five black and Latino households in America, report they don't have enough food to eat. This includes 30 million adults and as many as 12 million children. It's wrong. It's tragic. It's unnecessary. It's unacceptable. So we're going to extend emergency nutritional assistance for 30, for 43 million children and their families enroll in the SNAP program through the rest of this year. We'll help hard hit restaurants prepare meals for the hungry, provide food for the families who need it. We'll invest $3 billion in making sure mothers and their young children have the nutrition they need. This will not only meet our moral obligation we have to one another, but it will also spur our economic growth get restaurants and workers back on the job. And as we work to keep people from going hungry, we'll also work to keep a roof over their heads to stem the growing housing crisis and evictions that are looming. Approximately 14 million Americans have fallen behind on rent, many at risk of eviction. If we don't act now, there'll be a wave of evictions and foreclosures in the coming months as the pandemic rages on. This would overwhelm emergency shelters, increase COVID-19 infections as people have nowhere to go and can't socially distance. Next week, we'll take action to extend nationwide restrictions on evictions and foreclosures. This will provide, this will provide more than 25 million Americans greater stability instead of living on the edge every single month. And I'm asking Congress to do its part by funding rental assistance for 14 million hard-hit families and tenants. It should be a national minimum wage of $15 an hour. No one working 40 hours a week should live below the poverty line. The vaccine rollout in the United States has been a dismal failure thus far. Tomorrow, I will lay out our vaccination plan to correct course and meet our goal of 100 million shots at the end of my first 100 days as president. We'll also do everything we can to safely reopen a majority of our K through eight schools by the end of the first 100 days. We can do this if we give the school districts, the schools themselves, the communities, the states, the clear guidance they need as well as the resources they need. These are the key elements to the American Rescue Plan that would lift 12 million Americans out of poverty and cut child poverty in half. Our plan would reduce poverty in the black community by one third, reduce poverty in the Hispanic community by almost 40%. We not only have an economic imperative to act now, I believe we have a moral obligation. We will never, ever give up. And we will come back. We'll come back together. 